Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in today's video we're going to talk about mid layers for hiking. Stick around if you want to find out more. So I'm out filming with my daughter Lily today. There she is looking cold and miserable. So if you're new to hiking and you wonder what I mean by a mid layer, the mid layer is, as it sounds, the middle part of the layering system and its primary purpose is to keep you warm trap heat that you generate through your activity but also to wick away moisture um, that transfers from your base layer through your mid layer and out into your outer layer. So what I'll cover in this video today is I'll talk about three of the most popular mid layers and I'll, I'll break down the advantages and disadvantages each to help you make a, a choice regarding which one might be the right one for you. Right, so the first mid layer we're going to talk about is the humble fleece. So I wore a fleece probably for the first two or three years after I started hiking. Um, mainly because there are a lot of advantages to fleece, which I'll touch on now. So let's talk about the advantages of fleece then. Well, the main one and the reason why I wore it so much in my early hiking days is the price of the mid layers I'm going to tell you about today it's by far and away the cheapest. Fleece comes in many various weights. This is quite a, a heavyweight fleece. It's absolutely freezing today, so uh, uh, ideal for this type of, uh, type of weather. Right, so other advantages of fleece is it's extremely comfortable to wear. It's quite stretchy. Um, and the better ones are very breathable. Right, okay, so what are the disadvantages of fleece? Well, right now in this weather provides a good example of one of those disadvantages. It's cold today and it's quite windy. And to benefit from a fleece, it has to be really be covered by an outer layer. Uh, all the heat that I've generated is being stripped away from my body by the wind that's cutting through the fleece fabric. Other disadvantages are they're not the most most weather resistant of fabrics so if it was raining now and rain was falling onto this it would start to soak in and the fleece would get quite heavy and i think the final disadvantage for me is its packability um, if you need to take this off at all it doesn't pack down particularly small so it will take up quite a bit of space in your rucksack but overall for anybody looking to get into hiking not wanting to spend a massive amount of money to get started a fleece is a fantastic choice providing it's paired with an outer layer so the next mid layer we're going to talk about is down insulation right so down insulation um, the, the way down keeps you warm is the little filaments of down clusters that are in the baffles within this jacket and they act as an insulator by trapping the warm air that, uh, that you generate uh, during your activity. Okay, so let's talk about the advantages of down then. So for its weight, down often offers the highest level of warm to weight ratio. So although there are various different weights of down jackets, it's very rare to find an alternative that provides the same level of warmth that can pack down quite as small. Um, on days when it's not raining as well, the down jacket also offers a little bit more weather resistance than the, uh, the fleece that we featured earlier in that uh, uh, this has a windproof outer layer so wind won't cut through it in the same way that uh, it did on the fleece. So what that does mean is uh, on days when it's dry you don't always need an outer layer because the down jacket has a windproof uh, outer shell uh, you can do what I'm doing today and use this just over your base layer and it will still keep you nice and warm. Right, so let's talk about the disadvantages of, of down then. Well, the main one, to work at its best, you need to keep the down clusters inside the jacket completely dry. So if you're planning to use this without a, an outer shell and it starts raining, uh, if the down starts to soak through, it will stop keeping you warm all of that insulation property will be lost. Other disadvantages of down are the price. 
it's the most expensive uh, mid layer choice that I'm going to share with you today. And for some people as well, um, the fact that uh, the down inside this jacket uh, is from an animal, uh, despite most manufacturers obviously abiding by um, guidelines regarding the responsible sourcing of down, for some people um, that will put, completely put them off uh, using a down jacket. Right, okay, so the final mid layer we're going to talk about is the synthetically insulated mid layer. So, in a similar way to how down works, this jacket has inside it a sheet of synthetic insulation, um, so man made insulation, that's designed to trap heat in a similar way to down does. So, there are little uh, filaments and uh, kind of air pockets within the synthetic insulation that trap heat in the same way that down does. Right, so let's talk about the advantages of synthetic insulation. So whereas down, as we mentioned earlier, the minute it gets wet, it stops working effectively. Uh, synthetic insulation will continue to keep you warm, even if the jacket gets really wet through. I think it's designed this one to retain about 80 to 90 percent of its insulation properties. So other things to consider with synthetic insulated jackets is they tend to be cheaper than down but more expensive than fleece. So another advantage of the synthetically insulated jacket is the vast majority have a weather resistant outer fabric so they will provide you with a lot more protection from the elements than a fleece would for example. So are there any disadvantages to the synthetic insulated jacket? Well there aren't many but I think the, the two that I can think of are that with the filling inside this jacket being man-made over time it will break down and start to lose some of its effectiveness but we are talking over a long period of time and the price uh, the branded versions of these jackets such as this one are quite expensive particularly when compared to the fleece okay so before we talk about which one of these mid layers should you choose um, if you are finding the these types of videos helpful there is another video on my channel that goes into various types of outer layers and I'll put a link to that in the video description so you can check it out after this video if you'd like to do that right okay so let's just talk about which one of these should you choose if you only had to pick one well unfortunately I think that's something that's very difficult for me to advise um, that's why I wanted to kind of share with you the advantages and disadvantages of each I think a lot of it will depend on your budget how often you go out hiking and the conditions that you plan to walk in hopefully I've given you enough information on the three types of layers um, to make a decision that would work best for you. Okay, what I will share though is which one I'd choose. So my preference has always been the synthetically insulated jacket. The reason for that is I just find it's the most versatile type of mid layer for the conditions that we tend to experience in the UK in that it provides good levels of warmth and weather protection let me know in the video comments below. If you're already out hiking, what mid layer do you prefer? Okay, so if you found this video helpful, please let me know by hitting the like button. It just helps me know whether these videos are proving helpful for people or not. So thank you very much for watching. If you've got any questions or any comments, leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, I'll catch up with you on the next video. Bye for now.